Greetings guys, gals, non-binary pals, and welcome back to another video. Recently on Twitter, I have seen an influx of just like terrible conservative memes. They keep coming up on my timeline from people quote retweeting them and laughing at them. And I find them so, so amusing. And so I wanted to share some of them with you. And so I've gone and found some right-wing memes, um, either taken from my Twitter timeline or from the subreddit r slash the right can't meme. And I thought we would sit down and just have a little bit of a laugh at just how unfunny conservatives are, because, you know, laughing at their unfunniness is a brilliant time. Um, but before we get into that, I would like to take a moment to say thank you to today's patron of the day, Knitting Menace. I appreciate you and your support so much. Thank you so much for joining. I hope that you enjoy this video. And if anyone else would like to become a patron, you can go to patreon.com slash savvy cat. It starts at as little as one pound a month and it genuinely helps me out so much. So thank you. Yeah, all right, let's have a dive into some bad conservative memes. <laughs> First one I found is one that came up on my Twitter timeline, which is, is this the future you want for your daughters and granddaughters? And it is an AI generated image because of course it is of like a white woman clutching the Union Jack, just, you know, show that she's British and we're obviously in the UK, surrounded by a bunch of like Arabic men all laughing. And what? <laughs> What? I just, this has been like a trend at the moment. I've seen a ton of memes like this with like British women surrounded by like Arabic men or Arabic people in general being like, is this the future that you want? And it's like, I am very confused because one, I don't think that immigration is to the extreme where a majority of the population is going to be anything other than white British. Um, but regardless, who freaking cares, man? I don't particularly care about the ethnicity of people around me. Is this the future you want for your daughters? I mean, I don't, I don't really care. How are you jumping to this conclusion? Why are you jumping to this conclusion? Why are you making AI art of this? Do something better with your time and stop fear-mongering, which shouldn't even really be fear-mongering because there's nothing really that you have to be afraid of. So... <laughs> this is two people talking. Uh, it's someone asking a pansexual person questions. So, are you bisexual? No, I'm pansexual. I'll have sex with everyone. So you bang children? No, that's pedophilia. You fuck dead people. No, that's necrophilia. So you fuck animals. No, that's zoophilia. Oh, so you're bisexual. No. Listen, I just don't understand why it matters. <laughs> I like, just don't get it. You do not have to understand the premise of pansexual. If your brain can't decipher between bisexual and pansexual, I don't really care. That's fine. Just respect the label that people use for themselves and carry on. Because believe it or not, the label other people choose to identify with doesn't actually have any impact on your life. And you're not like outsmarting anyone or proving any point by just being a dick. For one, you can just look up the definition of the difference between pansexual and bisexual, because there is one. And some people who fit the description of one identify with the other. Like I know a lot of people who fit with the description of pansexual do identify as bisexual. And like, that's fine as well. Like whatever fits you, you can use. And it's none of anyone else's fucking business. You don't get to sit here and be like, ha, huh, I owned you about your own sexuality because you don't even know what it is. It's like you, Open Google, just listen to what people say and respect people. Very, very simple. It's like, I find really interesting that a lot of people here, a, a bunch of people who watch my videos and otherwise who just know of my existence, really like to assume my sexuality, which I find really interesting. A lot of people call me a lesbian, which I am not a lesbian. And a lot of people just 
put the label of bisexual on me constantly. Cause I talk about how I have dated men, how I'm interested in men um, as well. And so people are just like, oh, she's bi. And people refer to me as bi quite a lot. And I have to make this disclaimer over and over again. I do not identify as bisexual. I also do not identify as pansexual. I identify as queer. End of. I don't have a label beyond that. So if everyone could stop trying to figure out what my label is, it's literally, it's in my name. The queer kiwi. I am queer, nothing else. Thank you. <laughs> This is Mario celebrating, saying, Black History Month is finally ending. And then underneath, he's crying because tomorrow is the first day of Women's History Month. Hey, Mario, bro, just get over it. <laughs> every, every single day of every single month of every single year is White Man Day. And so I think having like a Black History Month and a Women's History Month, etc., cetera, are like totally fine and totally valid. And like, what do you even really, what changes in that time? Not really very much. You still live exactly the same way as you did every other day, except maybe there are going to be like some educational things like at museums, there might be some like, extra history exhibits. At school, you might have more of a focus on that part of history. Like, I've never noticed or seen much change literally anywhere, aside from maybe a little bit of change on social media during any of these times. Like, don't act like it makes any difference to your life, even a little bit. <laughs> And this is a pie graph of red being the amount of discrimination and hate Republicans get and blue being the amount of discrimination and hate LGBTQ people get. And the entire thing is red with like a tiny sliver of blue because we all know that the most discriminated against hated genre of people is conservatives. Republicans. Republicans are the most hated group of people in the whole wide world. They get hate crimed, they get banned from places, they are just so oppressed and discriminated against. It's disgusting. That's why Donald Trump won the election in 2016. That's why he's likely going to win in the next election because Republicans are a minority and everyone hates Republicans. Bro, like, be so for real. It's so funny because they have no idea what discrimination and oppression actually looks like. So it's like they go and just fucking like hate queer people and they are actually being so discriminatory and horrible, but it's so ingrained in them that they think it's like normal. And then as soon as people are just like, hey, don't fucking do that and stand up for themselves or maybe like, bully them a little bit for having such oppressive like values. They're like, how dare you? You are discriminating against me. My life is so hard. Like bro, people being a little bit mean to you does not actually change your social standing even a little bit. <laughs> as soon as they don't get everything they want, they're like, oh my God, I'm being hate crimed. Like, come on, come on on. It's fucking, you wouldn't last a day, a day outside of your fucking Republican bubble as like a queer person. Like it's just, it's just so astounding. They see the fact that like Pride Month exists or that, I don't know, gay people can get married and they're like, oh my God, gay people can do the same thing as I can. So now I'm oppressed. Other people getting stuff doesn't take it away from you. This is a man sitting on the couch eating some chips and a muscly woman coming up to him and saying, I'm gonna be world champ, Zach. I'm a finely tuned fighting machine and you're fat and ugly. I'm sorry, it's over. And he then looks in the mirror and says, fat, ugly, well, I'll show her and goes to the hospital to get surgery. And he says, let's do this doc. And then now because he had surgery, he is a woman. So he is qualified to fight against women 
in the boxing ring, even though he's had no training at all. Obviously, since he is a biological male, that means he can immediately win this boxing match and knock out this world-class fighter. Bro, the ego you must have to think that you, as a man, can take out a, like, professionally trained fighter is fucking hilarious. It doesn't even, ma it doesn't matter how big you are. Nothing, it literally doesn't matter. A world-class fighter is going to take you out in fucking minutes. You do not stand a chance. As an untrained anyone, you do not stand a chance against a professional. You could not just step into the ring and knock her out. I'm fucking sorry, but the ego to think you're capable of that is unreal. Training is what makes all the difference. If you don't have good technique, you haven't trained for a long time, like it doesn't, it doesn't matter. You're not fucking winning. You're getting showed up immediately. I fucking dare you, I dare you to try to fight a trained fighter. I fuck, I dare you. Cause it's not gonna end well for you and you absolutely deserve to be throttled and left on your ass. Americans, nothing. British people, imagine not having free healthcare. And then it's like a frame from SpongeBob of just lots of big and dirty teeth. And I just don't entirely get the point of this one. Like imagine not having free healthcare and then just having bad teeth. Well, joke's on you for that one, Americans, cause dental care is not included under free healthcare. <laughs> We don't have free dental care for whatever fucking reason. I don't know, but we, you don't, dental care is expensive and something you have to pay out of pocket. I don't know how expensive it is in the States, but I pay 70 pounds to go to the dentist and then like 200 pounds for a filling, which is fucking ridiculous. And why I don't go to the dentist, even though my tooth really fucking hurts. <laughs> so the teeth thing is a bad argument. And regardless of anything, I think I would rather have bad teeth and free healthcare than good teeth and no free healthcare. And I, I love the idea that all Americans just have good teeth and that all British people just have bad teeth. It's a fucking hilarious notion. So funny. Um, and a completely null argument entirely. I just, yeah, imagine not having free healthcare. That sounds horrifying. That sounds horrible. I hate the idea of not having free healthcare. God, I just got my wisdom teeth out and I know I just said dental care isn't covered, but things like surgery is or can be. So I just got my wisdom teeth out under the NHS, which meant I didn't have to pay for it. And I cannot imagine if I'd have had to fork over a ton of money for it. Like I had the option to go private and I'm like, no, why would I pay 500 pounds when I could get it for fucking free if I just wait a few months. If I have the option, I'm gonna I'm gonna use it. And like Kat has been really sick recently. Like she had pneumonia. And although the doctors are fucking shit and not very helpful half the time, I know that that's a case pretty much globally. Um, I've heard a lot of stories about shit doctors in the US too. Like it doesn't really make much of a difference. GPs are just generally not the greatest not the most helpful, but she's had to go to the doctors like six times and the hospital once, and she's had to do a bunch of tests and whatever. And if we had to fucking pay for that, she wouldn't have been able to. She'd just be fucking sick forever. Like I'm gonna take the free healthcare any day, any day. Thank you. Like my sister was admitted to the hospital a year ago for like a heart murmur and then had to get like heart surgery and if we didn't have free healthcare, that would have cost a fucking arm and a leg. But you know what it cost instead? Nothing, nothing. And now her heart is better. She doesn't have to take medication for it anymore because it, she got it fixed for free. And the wait time I think was like six months, which I'm pretty sure is like how long it is in the US as well. That's what's so funny is I see all these people being like, the problem with free healthcare is that you have to wait a really long time to get seen as though the wait lists on a similar amount of time in the States and you have to pay for it. Like, I know how long you have to wait, but you pay more in taxes and you have to pay $500 a month in insurance. I work this out. We pay less in taxes towards healthcare than Americans pay in health insurance. So like, 
it actually turns out to be cheaper paying it in taxes. This is like a two by two little layout of dialogue between that one like woman that gets used in all the leftist memes and Elon Musk that says, Joe Biden should pay for my student loans. Get a job, sweetie. Ah, ooh, you can't say sweetie. It's offensive to diabetics. Hmm, I wonder. Donald Trump, basic biology, guns, family value, patriarchy, Harry Potter. Ah, there she blows and she's blowing up. What? <laughs> That's so, they have like, they're limited to like two jokes. And one of them is just calling us snowflakes and saying that we're oversensitive to anything. Like no one is getting mad at you and yelling at you for saying silly little words. Like sweetie, being offensive to diabetics. I know that's a joke, but it's a really bad joke. The words that you're trying to defend using are like actual harmful slurs that have like historical significance behind why they're bad. And I don't understand why you feel the need to use them. If someone is like, hey, that word has like a really terrible historical meaning to it. Maybe don't say it. Then you know what you can do? very easily cut it out of your vocabulary, very easily. And so like shouting things like Donald Trump, basic biology, guns, family value, and patriarchy, and Harry Potter at someone, no one gives a shit, man. Say what you want. You just have to handle the like repercussions of saying what you want. And none of those things are like bad words to say. It's just about your opinions on them that's the problem. You can yell about how much you love Harry Potter all you like, like go for it. Do what you want. But people are gonna be upset with you and tell you that like, hey, did you know this about Harry Potter and JK Rowling and why we shouldn't be supporting it? And if you continue to, those people are just gonna be like, well, you know what, fuck you. And then carry on. Using Elon Musk in this is so fucking funny too because isn't he banning the word cis from Twitter because he classes it as a slur? Like he took over Twitter and the N word went up by like 500% in the first day and that's fine. But then he's like, you can't use the word cis on Twitter because that's actually a slur. Like, <laughs> and you call us fucking snowflakes. You call us fucking snowflakes. Using actual slurs with like, terrible historical power behind them versus using the word cis, which is literally Latin for like on the side of, it's on the side of, and then trans is like on the other side. Like they are just, <laughs> they're just descriptors that have no historical significance behind them at all. And thus they are not slurs because they have no negative meaning behind them. But you know, can't say them on Twitter cause it's bad and some people will absolutely blow their tops at you for calling them cis. Here we have some really fantastic um, made up statistics. That is black males are 6.5% of the US population. 94% can't read proficiently at 18. 63% don't work full time. 72% illegitimacy rate. 33% are convicted felons. 50% of the male prison population commits 60% of murders, but white people, racism, and guns are the problem? This is so funny because not a single one of these things is correct, obviously. At least try to make your statistics a little bit reasonable because 94% being illiterate at 18 is literally the most outlandish statistic you could ever give ever, at least try to make it seem believable if you're gonna make a fucking meme like this. Like, <laughs> but let's say, all right, let's just look at it and come at it with the lens of this being true. Let's pretend everything here is true. You know what the problem is? Racism. <laughs> That's still, that is the cause. If this was the issue, it is in fact all caused by racism. If 94% of black adults can't read, that is the fault of racism, absolutely. Why are they not being taught how to read? How are they being left out of the education system when white people are not? And if 63% of them don't work full time, why are they not being hired? Why are they not being given jobs? Why aren't they being educated to the level in which they are able to 
get good jobs. And if 50% of the prison population is black, why is that? Why are they being arrested at a rate higher than any other race? Is it because they commit more crimes or is it because they are being racially profiled? And if it's because they're committing more crimes, like this is saying, why are they being brought up in a way that is leading them to having to commit more crimes? What is happening with their upbringing, with the socioeconomic environment that they're living in? Like all of these things do in fact come back to white people and racism. And guns being on here is hilarious because if all these murders that are being committed are with guns, then yes, those are also a big part of the problem. And like, like I said, uh, these statistics are wrong, like massively skewed. However, obviously there is a higher percentage of the black population who are in prison and who are convicted of crimes and are less educated, etc. Nowhere near to this degree. However, yeah, that is all a result of racism. So I don't know what fucking point you were trying to prove here, but um, the, the point you proved was that racism is terrible and real. So I'm glad you're on our side for that. <laughs> here is a comic and the first one is AOC saying, defund the police with like a Black Lives Matter sign next to her. And then in the second panel, it's her walking down with bodyguards saying, see what's so bad. And in the background is like a woman with a baby getting mugged, people robbing cars and breaking into buildings, etc., etc. And I just don't think people understand what defund the police means. The right are so funny because they love, love to misunderstand every point we come up with. They just see the tagline and then just like close their ears about anything else that we try to say after that. They hear defund the police and all they think is, oh, so you want crime to happen? Like, no, no, it's defund the police and put the money into better resources to help people. Police exist to come and clean up after the crime has happened. Defunding the police means putting money into resources that actually help people. It's about protecting people and preventing crime because police don't do anything until it's too late. You go to police to like report that you're being stalked and they're like, ah, it's nothing, nothing's happened yet, we can't do anything. You come back to them again after weeks of it happening and they're like, well, we can't really do anything. And then you get fucking murdered and then they're like, we gotta catch this guy. Like, you know, they're not doing enough. There needs to be separate places you can go to get support who are actually able to support you and do things. It's not about getting rid of the justice system entirely. It's about preventing crime as much as possible. And that's a better place to put your money. This is a large man going and punching a woman with a bunch of like leftists um, going, whoa, 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 and like telling him to stop. And then they did the same image underneath, except now he's got pigtails and is wearing like a trans flag skirt. So obviously now he's a trans woman. And um, the same like leftist people are going, wow, wow, like, yay, do punch her other woman. What? <laughs> what? No one is encouraging violence. Violence is bad, no matter who is committing it. It's not the answer. It's not okay. Especially when, you know, this is seemingly an innocent woman who has done absolutely nothing and is being punched. She is defenseless. She has not done anything to provoke this. She's not fighting back. This is just someone going up and punching a woman. And it doesn't matter what your gender is, you don't fucking do that. And no one is saying that you should do that. Literally no one. And I know sometimes I say no one and then I get comments being like, you can't say no one. There are some people who do. But in this instance, I'm pretty sure I'm safe to say no one. <laughs> no one is fucking supporting that. And if they are, if there are a few people that are supporting that, then um, I don't know what to tell you, but they're not on our side. <laughs> they don't think they're on anyone's side, really. This is someone checking into a hotel and they are depicted to be a trans woman in the sense of they have a beard and a hairy chest, hairy arms. They're wearing a really dirty 
pink top and purple skirt and they have long hair smoking a cigarette and says, name is Stevens. My preferred pronouns are she, her. And the concierge says, thank you, Mr. Stevens. My preferred state of mind is reality. There's, there's obviously so many things wrong here. For the first one being the most obvious of like, fucking get over it. Who cares? Who fucking cares? cares. I don't know how many times we have to say it, but like these conservatives, TERFs, etc., need to stop making the same joke and the same meme over and over and over again because it was never funny. Um, and also like, how are they still laughing at it? Like I talked about this recently of how conservatives just don't know what jokes are and how to have fun. But like, I mean it so bad. Like they have the same jokes that they use over and over again because they can't find humor in anything other than laughing at other people. They are incapable of laughing at themselves or with each other. And like, so they have to laugh at other people and they have just like only a few ways they know how to do that, that they're like, this is gonna piss people off. But like, let me tell you, no one actually gives a fuck. No one cares that you're making these jokes. It's fucking annoying, but you look so stupid. Like trans people look at this and they're like, are you fucking, what the fuck? Grow up. You know, you're not actually really hurting anyone's feelings. You just look like an asshole, and you're just not very funny. Learn how to have fun actually. And like, don't laugh at people because I don't really, un there's nothing really fun or satisfying about laughing at people. Life is so much more fun when you laugh with each other, when you laugh at yourself, and when you actually are constantly coming up with new jokes. I don't really ever see people being like, the left only has three jokes, because we don't. We actually have fun and laugh about a lot of different stuff and not stuck on the same thing for literally over a decade this joke has been made. At least we've moved on from like, my gender is helicopter. Like, at least we've moved on from that. <laughs> and then on top of that, like they always depict trans people in the same way. For one, it's always trans women. They never do it the other way around. They always show trans women. And it's always just someone who is like more like frumpy and they have body hair and a beard and like more masculine features. I just find it so interesting that they like refuse to acknowledge trans people that exist outside of this because it doesn't fit their narrative. They're like, trans people are just men in dresses and wigs. See, they all look like this, which is untrue. And also even trans people who do look like that, like they're not fucking doing anything either. Like just leave them alone and respect their choices. This is the dog sitting in fire meme and it's declining marriage rates. This is fine. Declining birth rates. This is fine. High divorce rates. This is fine. Yeah. Yeah, it is fine. <laughs> Why does any of that matter? I just, I, I true. why does any of that matter? Declining marriage rates? Okay, what's the problem with declining marriage rates? Less people are getting married and what? Why does marriage matter? Why does that, why, why does that matter? I don't get why it matters if people get married or not. Like marriage isn't the be all end all. It's not the most important thing in the world. And also like divorce rates are going down. So I don't particularly know where that point comes from. Marriage rates are going down, which in turn also means that divorce rates are going down because shocker, if less people get married, less people get divorced. So you have to pick a priority. I feel like it's better to just not get married than to have lots of divorces purely just because going through a divorce seems like a hassle. <laughs> it just seems like a hassle. It's a lot of legal paperwork and whatever. Getting married is also a bunch of paperwork. Like it seems easier to just not do either. And like the declining birth rate is such an interesting one because like, yes, the amount of children people are having is going down, but it is still on average 2.23 globally. So we are still having more children than there are people and it's expected to keep declining. So it'll be like 1.6 by 2100. But at the same time, our life expectancy is longer. So people are on earth longer. So the population is still gonna be growing even if the birth rate is lower because more people are gonna be around for a longer period of time. 
And I also, once again, don't really understand why that matters at all. Like the population getting smaller, which it isn't, is not a, it's not the end of the world. That's not a problem at all. Like people are like the population is in danger. We have eight billion people. There are eight billion people. Like the population of earth hit 1 billion in 1804. So <laughs> just over 200 years ago, we hit a billion and now we're on 8 billion and people have been around for a really, really long time. Humans have been around for a couple million years now, right? So it took like a couple million years for our population to reach 1 billion. And in the past like 220, we've gone up to 8 billion. That is phenomenal. So the world's population hit 1 billion in 1804. So like 220 years ago. And then when I was born, the global population was 6 billion. I am now 24 and the global population is 8 billion. Like that's a ridiculous amount of growth. If it slows down, it's not really a bad thing, is it? It's not like we're gonna fucking run out of people. The only reason that, you know, we'd need to keep having a lot of kids and keep the population increasing exponentially is literally just for like capitalistic reasons. It's just to fuel the economy and consumerism, etc. And having the fear of not having that, I think is a lot for some people. Um, but you know, we shouldn't have a society and an economy that depends so heavily on that. We put way too much pressure on workers and our consumerism is unreal. Like it doesn't have to be this way. We should be, we should be able to be just fine with less people. Cause I mean, we've always had less people. Anyway, yeah. So none of those things are bad. I don't think. Declining marriage rates, declining birth rates, high divorce rates. I don't understand why anyone cares about that. None of that's important outside of your own life. Like get married, don't get married, have kids, don't have kids. It doesn't matter. Do what you want. It doesn't matter what other people are doing. I don't give a fuck about other people's marriage or divorce rates. Do whatever you want. Guess what? It doesn't impact me. And if you're spending all your time concerned about other people's marital status and how many kids they're having, your life is boring. <laughs> you should do things that are more fun. Focus on your own family. If marriage and kids are so important to you, go get married and have some kids and focus on them instead of other people. This is the end of all the memes that I have in my phone today. I hope that you had a good time looking at them and a good giggle and also like frustrated like face palm every now and then throughout this video. Don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. I am here a couple times a week and I would love to see you around again. A massive thank you to my Sprout Nova patrons whose name are up on the screen right now. I appreciate you greatly. Thank you so much for your support. And a huge, huge thank you to my Kiwi Cap patrons, Bobby, Josh, Mandy, Ikazel, Jessica, Eldo, Danielle, Raven, Elias, Chris, Samuel and Knitting Menace. I appreciate your support so, so much. Thank you so much for joining. If anyone else would like to become a patron, you go to patreon.com slash savvy cat. We'll click the top link in the description. For as little as one pound a month, you get my videos a day early. And then for three pounds and up, you get things such as outtakes, bonus mini podcasts, live streams, vlogs, and more. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, the queer kiwi, and Twitter, that queer kiwi. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe. Keep fighting. I love you. Mwah. When you close your eyes, you replace